All right, everybody, welcome back. We are doing the next lesson on kinematics in one dimension. This one will be short and sweet, and you've probably earned it because the last few have been a bit longer. So last day, last time we talked about um, scalars and vectors and how there's different quantities, and depending on uh, what information they have, they're um, going to be either a scalar or a vector. Scalars have an amount, just a magnitude. Vectors have an amount and a direction. And um, some of the things that we think of as having the same meaning in everyday life, it turns out in physics, might have very different meanings. And an example of that are the words speed and velocity. We tend to think of those two as being the same thing. But what we'll see is that in physics, they have a very specific meaning. So they actually can be different from each other, depending. Uh, and so really, speed is just simply defined as the rate of change of distance. So how far you travel in a certain amount of time. The symbol for speed is V, lowercase v. Um, speed is definitely a scalar. And so the formula is just V is equal to D over T. Now velocity slightly different is going to be the rate of change in position. And so velocity is a vector. And we would write that velocity is also lowercase v, but we would probably just put a little arrow over top if we need to differentiate. And you will often see um, physicists, if I can be honest, are lazy. And so they'll often just drop that, um, that arrow indicating a vector. Um, if you're the one solving the problem, you will know whether or not you're dealing with a vector or a scalar, which one is going to be important. So you will know which way to treat that. But if we want to be explicit, we could say that v with an arrow is equal to d with an arrow over t. Okay, so um, if we look at an example here, so a student travels 11 meters north, and then turns around and travels 25 meters south. If the total time of travel is 12 seconds, find their average speed and their average velocity. Well, um, the speed is just going to be the distance traveled divided by the time it took. And so the distance traveled is going to be, they went 11 meters, and then they also went 25 meters, and they did that in 12 seconds. So that's 36 over 12, which we can calculate as being 3. Now, um, I want to make sure I do the right sig fig. So instead of 3, I will call it 3.0. And I need to include units. And I didn't mention this already, but the units, if this is measured in meters and this is measured in seconds, then the units are meters per second. So the units for velocity are, or sorry, for speed and velocity are both meters per second. So if I want to figure out the velocity here, I might just draw a little picture on the side. I'll just sketch a little picture. What happened? A student traveled north 11 meters. So they went north 11 meters. And they turned around and then went south 25 meters. Now 25 meters south, I could represent that um, with an arrow pointing south. I really, I could also call that negative 25. That would be another way of thinking about 25 meters south. And so my resultant or my total displacement is going to be this vector right here. So there is my displacement. And we can see visually from the picture, or we can do it by calculating, that the displacement is just going to be 14 meters south or negative 14 meters. Now, putting um, south into an equation is kind of challenging, but putting a negative sign into an equation is pretty easy. And so I'm going to usually default to using positive and negative whenever I want to indicate direction. And that's going to work great, especially as we talked about last time. It's going to work great in one dimension. So if I say v equals d over t, then I could write that as negative 14 divided by 12. And I can't do that one off the top of my head, so let's use a calculator. So, so negative 14 divided by 12. My answer comes out as this big long string, negative 1.16667. But I know I need to round off to just two sig figs, so I'll just call that negative 1.7 meters per second. Now, I could write that answer as 1. Point meters per second south. That would be the exact same thing. I'm going to kind of stick to the negative signs, though. Okay, so two more quick examples here. How long does it take a car traveling at 45 kilometers an hour to travel 100 meters? So 
the first thing, just before we get started, students like to launch in and start throwing numbers into formulas, and that's great, good for you. But um, one thing should kind of set off alarm bells right off, right off the bat, and that's that right there, that kilometers per hour. We can't use numbers that aren't in base units. So kilometers an hour, while we talk about that in everyday life, doesn't work when we do our calculations. We have to do our calculations in meters per second. Now, if you remember from a previous video, if I want to go from kilometers an hour into um, meters per second, there is a magic number that will help me do that conversion. And that magic number is 3.6. So I'm going to divide by 3.6. And I'm going to find here that 45 divided by 3.6 gives me 12.5. Now, I want to point out here, um, if you can't remember whether you should multiply or divide by 3.6, just notice that an equal number in kilometers an hour meters per second 12.5 meters per second is a smaller number than 45 kilometers an hour, but they're equal. So when you go from kilometers an hour to meters per second, you should end up with a smaller number as a result. Now, when we do any of these calculations, we're going to do it in the same way. So I'm going to use, start with my formula, V equals D over T. And we can talk about speed here because we're just cruising along. V equals D over T. Now I need to solve that for T. So I'm going to rearrange this first. A lot of times students want to just put numbers into their formulas, but we, we're going to solve it algebraically first, and it's going to make life way easier down the road. So I'm going to first, I'm going to multiply both sides by T, which cancels it out here, and I get V times T equals D, and then I'm going to divide by V and divide by V, and I get T equals D over V. And so a distance of 100 meters in, uh, at a rate of 12.5 meters per second is going to give me 100 divided by 12.5 is going to give me 8. And last but not least, um, I want to look at my sig fig. So this is 2 and this is 4. So I'll, I'll just add an 8.0 seconds so that I have two sig figs in my answer. All right, uh, and last example, we got a skateboarder traveling. Uh, uh, how far does a skateboard traveler? How far does a skateboarder travel <laughs> in 22 seconds if his average velocity is 12 meters per second? So again, starting with our formula, v equals d over t. This time, I want to isolate for d. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by t. Multiply by t. That cancels out, and I'm done. Distance is just going to be um, speed times time. And so I've got 12 meters per second times 22 seconds, which is 264, which will round off to just two sig figs. And so I'll call it 260 meters. Okay, so that's it for speed and velocity. Now, if you look ahead here, there's a little activity which we, we're, we'll do next day in class. You can skip this next bit. I want you to go ahead and look at this worksheet. Now, when it comes to these worksheets, you're going to notice a common theme, right? They're probably going to start off with fairly simple problems and then they can move to the more complex. And you don't need to do this entire worksheet. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to pick any five questions. And that's going to be a theme we're going to run with. So do any five of these questions. If you're feeling like you're not quite comfortable, maybe start with one and work your way through. If you're feeling like you want more of a challenge, jump down to the bottom and, and try some of those more challenging ones. And of course, the answers are all um, are all provided as well. Okay, um, that's it for speed and velocity.